Uh, and I'd like to recognize the um, Honorable Christ Christina Marie Sablon. Um, um, uh, Ms. Sablon, uh, you have uh, five minutes, please. Thank you. I think you're, you have to unmute yourself. My apologies. Um, okay, let's try that again. Hi. Happy day, Chairman Grijalva, Vice Chairman Sablon, Ranking Member Westerman, Vice Ranking Member Gonzalez Colon, and distinguished members of this committee. Thank you for conducting this important hearing on Medicaid, SSI, and SNAP parity for the territories. We in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands commend and thank President Biden for making parity for all Americans and critical federal programs a priority in his administration. And we applaud his call to end our second class citizenship. President Biden recognizes, as we do, that based solely on where we live, the people of the Northern Marianas, Guam, American Samoa, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico are second class citizens of this nation. Approximately 4 million people reside in the territories of the United States. Of those, about 54,000 live in the Northern Marianas. Although we are part of the American political family, we are not equals with our fellow Americans in the states. Our delegates do not vote in Congress, our people cannot vote for president, and our access to vital federal programs is inferior. In the states, funding for Medicaid and nutrition assistance is open-ended based on need. In the Northern Marianas, funding for these programs is fixed in statute. Time and again, we have had to rely on Congress to provide supplemental funding, and our most vulnerable citizens have experienced the devastating effects when Congress has been slow to respond. In March 2019, the Commonwealth's Medicaid program ran out of money halfway through the fiscal year. This happened five months after Super Typhoon U2 destroyed our islands. Medicaid beneficiaries and providers were notified that the program was broke and there was nothing left for reimbursements. People deferred care, stopped taking medications they could not afford, and prayed. In October 2020, after enrollment in the Nutrition Assistance Program spiked 46% and faced with the prospect of federal money running out, our governor, Ralph Torres, slashed food aid to thousands of struggling families in the middle of the pandemic. The Commonwealth still had $23 million for NAP, but was projected to expend all these funds within six months. For families out of work because of COVID-19, who had been waiting months for pandemic unemployment assistance, the pain inflicted by the governor's cuts was excruciating. They had no income, no PUA, and suddenly less food. Eventually, in both these cases, Congress did come through with supplemental funding, and Medicaid and NAP benefits were restored within a few months. But these examples underscore how disparities in crucial federal programs have dire consequences for people living in American territories. The inequities sharpen in times of disaster and economic hardship. During the pandemic, enrollment in Medicaid in the Marianas has more than doubled from approximately 16,000 residents before COVID-19 to nearly 33,000 this year. Over 12,500 residents are enrolled in NAP today about a quarter of our total population, yet funding remains fixed. Yes, supplemental appropriations from Congress have made it possible to meet the surge in need. Without the generous assistance of the federal government, we in the Northern Marianas would be in a far worse position today. So we thank you, members of Congress, for all the federal aid we have received in the Commonwealth for disaster recovery and COVID-19 relief. We are further encouraged by proposals in Congress to improve treatment of the territories in key federal programs. HR 4406 extends Medicaid funding for the territories and provides enhanced federal matching rates. HR 421 brings the Commonwealth closer to full inclusion and in SNAP. And there is more funding for nutrition assistance in the President's fiscal year 2022 budget, including $30 million for the Northern Marianas two and a half times more than we currently receive in the annual block grant. 
Yes, more funding helps mitigate disparities in federal programs, but true equity requires more enduring solutions. Vulnerable Americans living in the territory should not have to worry about federal programs running out of money for food and health care, especially after disasters or economic downturns. Without full parity and funding that can be adjusted based on need, there will always be insecurity and instability in these programs. Congress has a moral imperative to provide parity and make equitable investments in the health and well being of all Americans, no matter where we live in the nation. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Wow, another perfect timing, uh, Ms. Tina, except that we lost your video. Uh, yes, your I